uh, lobby bar that we encourage you to visit as much as you can. And there's some merchandise out there from the writers, and they'll be happy if y'all look at that. And heck, they'd be happy if you take it all home with you. That'd be fine with them. So consider that, please. Also, there's two restrooms in the lobby. They're unisex. There's one toilet per room. So you queue up there in front of the bar and wait your turn or... Shoot, you can just all go in together if you want. We don't really care. It'd be okay. But thank you for coming. Thank you so much. Now, Abe Partridge uh, got introduced to me about, uh, well, it was before the panorama, so it had to be at least two years ago, uh, maybe three, I don't know. But anyway, uh, his songs just blew me away, and he blew me away. And uh, he actually uh, brought his family and had Thanksgiving lunch with my family that year and it was a very special time and I got to meet all his kids and he's got a few of them and I got, <laughs> and it was fun we had a great time but I just I love the guy I think he's a brilliant writer and uh, a great storyteller and, and it's just very poignant the way he does it so you're gonna you're gonna enjoy it if you hadn't heard him before and then this young man I've known him about the same amount of time uh, he's from Adairsville Georgia and um, he is a fine writer, and, and I love his music, and I love his songs, and I'm glad he's here. And I wish y'all could be like Bewitched and Twinkle Your Nose and get a few more people in here, but we're not going to tell those people watching online that they think that there's a 1,000 people here. And when we introduce these folks and we start clapping, I want y'all to sound like you're a 1,000 people. And I need to say hello to you folks watching online. Thank you so much. There's a tip jar at the top of your chat box. We would love for y'all to visit that. and. Hit that button and hit that button and just keep hitting that button till you ain't got any money left. That'd be okay with us. Just hit that button. That'd be okay. So thank you for doing that. Uh, call a friend or a neighbor. This is a live stream. You're seeing it just like it's happening. Uh, these folks in here, they paid $100 each to be here. Uh, so y'all are getting to see it for free. So y'all should go to that tip, tip jar and, and make up some of that $100. So that'd be awesome. But... Uh, Thank you all for coming. Thank you so much. Abe will be up in a little bit, but right now I need you to put your hands together. Sound like that thousand people that you are and give a nice welcome to Hunter Blaylock and the Sad Machine. Sit out to rule the world. They will hold our loose, a blue eyed girl. They you win, never even called. All you ever did is break my heart again.
Said, my name's Hunter Boylock over here to my right this evening. This fellow named Tim Moore. He's a talented it. songwriter from Northeast Georgia. Over here to my left is a man who needs no introduction, but I'm going to introduce him anyway. His name's Austin Harper. We call him Steve for reasons too uh, complex to explain right now. Anyway, this one here is a love song. I only got two love songs, so I got to sneak one in here at least. It's called Lay You Down. Oh 
second ago, I'll introduce you to a fellow named Tim Moore over here. Uh, he's going to be playing a couple instruments for us. He's also a very talented songwriter. We're going to play a couple of his tunes for y'all, if that's all right. Yeah, this is a tune we just finished writing in uh, Pensacola, Florida like last week, two weeks ago. So still working it out, getting the new stuff out of the way. It's called Coming Home.
songs. This next song is a love song. It is the Mushroom Song. It's all really the only name I got for it. I was out picking mushrooms one day and living in Cleveland, Georgia, and they were for food consumption. They weren't uh, psychedelics at the time. And uh, I don't know, I just came back in. It was a nice evening, and I wrote this tune. coming out uh, at some point in the future I used to say dates and stuff but then uh, once I missed like all five of those dates uh, I just quit saying them so this album will come out at some point but it's gonna be called Cherokee Hills and this is the title track off of it I hope you guys like it
cross with them That old scar don't bother him more It's got the stars and stripes over it He tells his war stories Every Thursday night Out there at the Veterans Club Yeah, that's his life living breath they put them in the ground and they flew old glory proud his daughter spoke at the funeral mama had done passed on and she got dumped by that rich man and never had the guts to come back home she died of amphetamine abuse out there in Arkansas Ain't it funny how life works out She wouldn't know better than him at all hours to go to my next show and good lord willing my next meal hell I got a pack of smoke so I'm good to go as speakers play both hands on the wheel and I'm getting my scripture from the church signs I pass along the way hear that gospel from the folks in the towns that I play the radio matches my mood Girl, every damn song still reminds me of you I'm hanging on an empty jar A muffled mic and a cheap guitar I'm just singing songs Wondering where you are I could call you up It'd be quicker If I don't You can blame my liver tonight Yeah, now 
wake up with a pounding head Shade my eyes cause they'll be red Better cash this check before I leave town And burn my ass if this thing bounce I need to fill the tank and Get to racing this old van out of town Well I'll tune into some local station I'll catch the end of Sunday morning coming down Scripture from the church signs I pass along the way. Hear that gospel from the folks in the towns that I play. The radio always matches my mood. Girl, every damn song still reminds me of you. And if I find the time to turn. There's something about the highway home that burns deep in my soul And it gets hotter with every setting the sun While the radio played and I was born to run Play one more here, then we're gonna go. We're gonna go at Abe get up here and play some tunes. Anytime we get to play with Abe Partridge, it is a sheer honor, and uh, we are glad to be here. Thank you, Abe, for having us. Thank you, Eddie, for having us out to open the show. This last one here is a song. It's a new one. Uh, I wrote it coming back from West Virginia about a month ago. Now uh, we were coming. Uh, we had to run up through West Virginia, and it was a real good run. And we were driving back on Easter morning. And uh, I don't know if anybody's traveled from uh, here to West Virginia and back, but as we were coming out of, uh, of a tunnel, it spits you right back out into Virginia. And uh, as you come out of that tunnel, there's a bunch of rolling hills and mountains and whatnot, and it's real pretty, and you come down this big old hill. And uh, right as we were coming down that, uh, the sun was just cresting over everything, and it was real pretty, and I was feeling all inspired. When I got back to the house, I wrote this tune before everybody woke up. It's called Road Dogs. Thank you all for having us. My name's Hunter Blaylock. That's Austin Harper. That's Tim Moore. Hey, Partridge, up next. So, so's been born 
We're running on no sleep. We got a stack of hotel keys. Barely getting by old guitars and the boys and
Hey, look who I found. It's Abe Partridge. Less than a 
emotion and it's more of a pain It's when you decide to give yourself freely Yes, it's simple It's less what you do And it's more who you are When you follow Your heart completely Yes, it's simple what you got and it's more what you give away it's singing your song amidst the sonic graffiti yes it's simple less a destination and it's more of a spark Thank y'all. All right, it's good to be back here at the Red Clay Theater here with Eddie Owens. Like you said, I think it was Thanksgiving of 2018, if I'm not mistaken. Me and my family came up and had Thanksgiving dinner at his place. Drank whiskey out by his fire pit all night. And then came here and participated in the songwriter. Thing. Had a good time. But uh I had a good yeah, I had a good great time here actually. Made it all the way to the end of that thing and then my buddy, Nathan Evans Fox, that I that I told to come down here and enter the contest ended up beating me. <laughs> <laughs> walked out with a thousand dollars and I told him I said but I should have never told you to come down here and enter this contest well, he's a fine songwriter and he deserved it this is a song I wrote called our babies will never grow up to 
be astronauts. I hope you like it. Well, our babies will never grow up to be astronauts, and there ain't no reason to care. Cause we've got disease and no despair so he drank and be merry but don't think a lot cause our babies will never grow up to be astronauts and our babies will never grow up Make it beyond the clouds. They'll never ride on the grandest of deep space craft. We're rocket powered, but we're nailed to the ground. And there ain't nothing up there but dust and rock. trains roll around here pretty pretty frequently huh every 15 minutes awesome I should have wrote some train songs I'll have a couple train songs ready next time I come here let's mark it down well I appreciate all y'all coming out on a um, Sunday night whenever I got a, I left a mobile Thursday and my wife said, Oh, be careful, it's Labor what, what Memorial Day was that Memorial Day weekend? And I was like, What? He's like, Yeah, there's gonna be a lot of traffic it's Memorial Day weekend. I was like, Oh, awesome. This is what we need, more cars on the road. I was uh, on tour, I've been on, I've been getting back out on the road a lot, you know, thank God. And uh that started back in my about March, we really started going hard at it. And uh, I've done traverse the country a few times since March. And I was coming back home from, uh, <clears throat> I was coming back home from Ohio uh, back in, back last month and was driving down on I-65 through Birmingham. We got a little bit south of Birmingham and somebody was doing about 90 miles an hour and careened out of control and knocked me in the ditch and totaled my car. Me and my bass player were in it and we come out without a scratch on us. But uh, I had to go through the horrible torment of trying to buy an automobile in 2022. I don't know if y'all tried to do that lately. But I would highly suggest that if you do not have to buy a car right now, don't buy one. It's a horrible experience. <laughs> Yeah, it's been uh, it's been a wild couple of months. And the very next day, uh, I had to call my wife to come get me because uh, the uh, rental car business is also one that's up in turmoil right now. And so we couldn't find a rental car, so 
had my wife have to come get me up from Birmingham, so she came up to get me, and we were driving back home, and after the wreck, and our car was total, and I had, I had an upright bass player uh, named Clint Lewis from West Virginia, he was with me, and uh, we get in our car, and we get about the same, I mean, it was r roughly within five miles of the same place where we had our wreck, and, and some, um, we see some madman in the distance careening back and forth through, through from, in, from emergency lane to emergency lane. Going all, he stopped off the side of the road. We just passed the guy, you know. Well, when we passed the guy, he got back on the road and he began to try to ram my car. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's funny now, I guess, but it uh, wasn't so funny then. <laughs> I called 911, I was like, it's me again. I have, I have another problem. Uh, I seem to have been in the wrong place at the wrong time two days in a row. And uh, I got up to speeds about 100 miles an hour in my truck, and this guy was gaining on me. And uh, so I, I told 911, I said, I'm going to pull off at this exit and, and uh, see if he follows me. And he did not. And uh, so then we got back on the road, and we found that guy had stopped and he was chasing this woman around the car and I was like, man, it was like that movie Final Destination. You know, it was like we were supposed to die in the car wreck and we didn't. And we, you know, fate was tracking us down. But uh, anyway, somehow I'm alive. And uh, yeah. <laughs> for now. Of course we're all alive for now, right? <laughs> I made it this far. May, hopefully we'll get back home tomorrow. <laughs> but uh, anyway, all right, I got to stop talking, stop, start singing songs. Y'all didn't pay to hear me talk. But you know what? I got my first talking gig coming up in October. So y'all, if you want to come to Oxford, Mississippi, come to, if you want to hear me just talk, come to Oxford, Mississippi in October. I'm getting paid to go and get in a hotel room to go up and talk to people. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty funny, huh? Uh, anyway, this is a song I wrote called Young Love. Made in some or open parentheses, Alabama skies, close parentheses. I hope you like
y'all so much. So good to be back up here. I'm thrilled after uh, two years of being in, being alone. It's so good to be back with you all. And uh, even, even at the, even at the small shows, they far, they are far superior to live streams. Live <laughs> I didn't, I've tried to do the live streams a couple of times and um, I found them to be soul sucking so I did not do any more of them because music is like, it's weird to play it to a screen, you know, and uh, it's supposed to be played to other people and, you know, we're all like pack animals, so uh, it's we're supposed to be together. We're not supposed to be apart, you know? And them screens make us be apart. And um, I think that's probably a lot of our, our problems right now. <laughs> them damn screens. Anyway, it's so good to be back with human beings and looking you in the eyeballs when I talk to you. I like doing that. We're forgetting how to talk to each other, eyeball to eyeball. And uh, anyway, I like doing that. This is a song I wrote. Whenever you stay on the road, you. I love being on the road. I, I never really got off the road, even through the pandemic. I just didn't play live shows, but I stayed on the road working on a, a project that will soon come to fruition. But I stayed on the road through the entire pandemic and uh, I love being on the road. And um, you meet folks on the road and there's a lot of experiences that, that you never have, you know, when you don't kind of stay on the road. And Anyway, this is a road song. I met this lady at a truck stop one time, Bruton, Alabama, and her name was Arletta. And I thought it was a weird name. And so I wrote this song that's not really so much about that lady because I don't know all that much about her, but it's about her name. <laughs> Hope you like it. Well, she wore a calm smile in that old truck stop diner like she'd been thinking about better days and the wrinkle on her brow and that salt and pepper hair could never hide such a lovely face and I said how you doing ma'am would you mind if I sat down and try to figure out I 
said, oh, what kind of name is that? Well, your daddy must have been a big country music player. It takes nearly the whole show to get loosened up. <laughs> I'm on the temp this song that I wrote in the 20 minutes. It took me two weeks to make it rhyme. It took me six months to learn it. Then I forgot it during the pandemic. Then it took me several weeks to remember it again. It's called A Partridge's 403rd Freak Out. I hope you like it. <laughs> Like dream state I'm in As I lay dying I think maybe we never existed at all Or just some five sensed hallucination Or just the mirror image of a high reality Beyond our comprehension And I lie awake at night And I can't keep my mind from wondering About what it all means that I have know that nobody in this whole wide world can give you the definition of consciousness that doesn't venture off into religion or some kind of absurdist pseudoscience. And since I started listening to both sides without caring on the which side I fell, well, I found out that there were more than two sides if you really want to know a subject well, which only led me to more heartbreak. As I thought about all the fights that have been started by two sides And neither one of them were truly wrong or right And then I started considering the brutality that I witness every day And how numb to the side of human suffering I've become in my middle age Now all the fascists and the commies are spewing out their dogmas Taking over the conversations Any voice that's devoid of an agenda Has been removed from consideration And I started thinking 
singing about the weapons of mass destruction, biological, chemical, and nukes. We could have had them all fired from the push of a button of this orange presidential buffoon. And so I started reading up on how I was going to survive a nuclear apocalypse. And after my research, I concluded I didn't even want to survive to live in a world like that. So even if I try to be positive and convinced, myself someday we might actually see peace well it's then that i realize in like a billion years or so this planet's gonna cease to be because the sun has gravity too you know we're being pulled in as we orbit and if we don't find a way to destroy ourselves then the sun's gonna do it scientist and the explorers and the greatest amongst us all who gave their lives to learning and research and made great discoveries about the world and then it occurred to me that all truth exists long before some learned man makes it known I mean if you think about it he don't equal MC squared just cause Einstein said it was so and now considering this science kinda seems like a waste I'll just devote myself to art. At least an artist creates something of value, a unique representation of his heart. Then I looked around at this plastic world and their frowning faces and their disdain for beauty. And I seen all the poor starving artists dwelling at the fringes of a cold society. There it is again. But you know that we would not have fur a lease if it were not for this individual named Beethoven and we'd certainly not have the White Album if Paul McCartney never met John Lennon and I said well maybe that's my problem I miss my Lennon somehow that chance done passed me by and that's the reason I'm standing here singing this stupid song and losing my freaking mind and then even this stranger thought my tortured mind began to ponder Lord, I wonder what if Einstein would have met McCartney first while John Lennon was studying the great wonders. I mean, I ain't saying it would have been the Beatles, man, but it would have been interesting to see what they put out because I know that Einstein had some pretty cool hair, but I wonder if he could twist and shout. And maybe if Einstein had been singing, oh, blood, Instead of drafting the letter to Roosevelt that paved the way for a nuclear bomb, then a little boy from Nagasaki could have married a pretty young girl from Hiroshima, and they could have sang oh, blah dee blah da together and taught their children songs by the people. And I can imagine that the guy that wrote Imagine would have been any use in a science lab unless that lab had the sole purpose giving world peace a chance and so we gotta get Lynn into science and Einstein to McCartney we gotta find a way to get back in time but then I realized if we ever build a time machine it'll be based on the scientific work of Albert Einstein so la 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 turn off your mind la 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 turn off
I didn't play guitar a whole lot during the pandemic on account of I didn't play no shows, you know. I'd play guitar whenever I was trying to put some lyrics to some kind of melody or something, but I didn't play it as frequently as I've been playing it regularly. And last month we played like three weeks in a row and I was having to rub icy hot on my wrist. Does that mean I'm getting old? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I was putting uh, icy hot on it. I put about, you know, I was driving. So I was lathering it up real good. And then I read on the back of it, only used like three or four times a day. And I was like, oh my God, I'm going to overdose on icy hot. <laughs> They would have scraped my remains off that road after that guy ran me over. I was like, well, I don't know if the car killed him or he OD'd on Icy Hot. <laughs> uh, yeah. One of my good buds I've in the military with, I've been, I, was with, I was in the military with him for over a decade. He called me today, and uh, he was complaining about a pinched nerve. And I was like, man, this is what old people talk about, dude. <laughs> Call each other and complain about pinched nerves. <laughs> is that what it's like to get old? Uh, okay. Cool. Well, that's what, I guess that's what we do now. This is a song I wrote. It was on my first album put out. <laughs> sound nothing like this on the record but this is the acoustic well every song I wrote it every song I write is the acoustic version <laughs> sometimes we go to the studio and make them not acoustic version I put on my black steel toes and my tweed jacket from Goodwill I'm gonna buy me some black sunglasses just like Dylan used to wear. I'm gonna go to my barber and tell him, won't you do me up the wildest of hair? And as I sit there, I'll look in the mirror and I'll work on my scary stare. I wish I, I was a punk rocker Cause it seems like the right thing to do Lord, I wish I, I was a punk rocker Cause it seems like top shelf boots but they play just exactly whatever them big record labels choose they fill arenas and they count their money and they do all the big shit that rock stars do but a punk rocker he will tell you the truth cause he's got nothing i 
school If you ain't into anything the mother kids think is cool If you're angry or a bit depressed If you ain't worried about being a star just sing it like your heart's on fire and play the guitar. Cause Lord, I wish I I was a punk rocker. Cause it seems like the right thing to do. you came? No. I hope you're glad you came. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I've been doing this. Uh, I've been traveling around the country and singing songs since the end of 2015. And uh, since I've been doing it full time since March of 2019, which had I known what was going to transpire in March of 2020, probably would not have begun to do it full time in March of 2019, <laughs> but we survived. We survived and me and my wife and children, my son Evans is here with me tonight. And uh, yeah, he's been, he's been on the road with me now for the past three days, having a real good time. We walked, we walked out to the Tallulah Fall, Tallulah Gorge today. And I walked across the uh, suspension bridge and then climbed uh, about 500 steps to get back up. I don't know if y'all ever, have y'all ever done that? Oh yeah. Boy, that's, a, that's what you call a cardiovascular exercise. I thought I was uh, back in boot camp again. <laughs> it was a... Uh, it wasn't the most pleasant experience, but man, what a beautiful, uh, what a beautiful sight. We, uh, yeah, we made it through the pandemic of, of 2020 and 2021. With uh, I got a art club. I started an art club. I used to make my living primarily playing shows like this and selling art at my shows, and then then came coronavirus and then I had to transition to making most of my living doing art and so we started an art club and we have we, we cap it at a hundred people but right now we have uh, I don't know some about 85 or something so uh, we got room in the art club if you are interested in art <laughs> and you want so much art I, if you if you're in them if you're in for like 12 months you'll have enough to like wallpaper your one of your walls in your house or something. I have people that have been members since I started it in April of 2020, uh, and they've got like well I don't know however many months are between April 2020 and right now which is a lot, and uh, they have a lot of art but uh, anyway. We have open spots available in the art club, so if you're interested in that kind of thing, come talk to me after the show and get you in, because uh, that's the way uh, that's the way all this makes sense. But anyway, it's twenty nine dollars a month, and you get a print every month. And I also usually do something else. This month I recorded a song, and uh, got like a private space on my website and. 
I give songs. Sometimes I give live records. Sometimes I give stickers. It's pretty cool. You should probably be a part of it. All right, that's all the promotional stuff that you're going to hear from me tonight. I hate doing it. I feel dirty every time I talk about selling stuff whenever I... I didn't write songs to make money. It just happened as a thing. But uh, then there's become this weird thing, and there's this weird balance that you have to make. Because, like, I wrote songs and sang them to myself for eight years before I ever played them publicly, and then I played them publicly, and then I wanted to play. I started playing so frequently that I couldn't work anymore, and then I said, well, I'm going to do this full time. But then when you do this full time, then you start having to make money making art, and, and art and, and, and money just... Man, it's like oil and water. But um, anyway, I'm glad y'all are here, and I'm glad you paid paid for tickets at the door. <laughs> and uh, my son is healthy on account of it. <laughs> He's not starving. Yay. Yeah, my boy's starving. Uh, I, really, why I got y'all in here is because Evan's going to be rummaging through y'all's cars. Why am I? Evan, go, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play another 30 minutes, Evan. You got a little bit more time take all the nickels you can find in those ashtrays okay let's see here I'll play y'all a song I wrote a, um, <clears throat> this is called a Coffee on the Counter it's about uh, well this song's kind of self explanatory <laughs> on 
the counter Now I done lost track of time It's been cooling for an hour Man, I must be losing my mind I'll crawl to the shower And dig down deep to find And I'll try to forget all these lines I'll try to forget all these Oh shit, this virus might kill me yet. Paranoia blues. I hope you like it. <laughs> might kill me yet paranoia blues I got the oh shit this virus might kill me yet paranoia still here, he'd have just the words to say. So come join me in our new Great Depression. I don't reckon we ever learned our lesson. It'll take more than a stimulus check to wash all our sins away. And so I'm headed out to the Walmart. Would y'all pray for She's standing kind of close. I'm going to cuss her if she don't move. I got the most shit. This virus might kill me yet. Paranoia blue. I got the oh shit. This virus might kill me yet. Paranoia blue. funny till you think about it. That ain't funny no more, right? Yeah. <laughs> Such is life. All right. Well, let's see here. I'm going to play y'all one. This is a... Uh... Let me know. Actually, I'll play it right here. Maybe, yeah, right here. 
was uh, right before the virus came and attacked us all. We, uh, I was traveling, <clears throat> doing a lot of touring with a buddy of mine by the name of, his name was Jacob Hall, he's 23 years old. He was a good buddy of mine, good friend. And also probably, probably the greatest keys player that I ever knew in my entire life. And uh, he, was, he was a child prodigy. He was a, he was, um, he won all type of awards as a, as a, as a young teen. And uh, I mean, he was a, he was brilliant, a, gen a genius. Um, <clears throat> Multi-instrumentalist, but when he played with me, I preferred that he played keys, but sometimes he wanted to play guitar, so I'd let him. But um, we went out on tour a few times, and the last time we went was a, as a two-week run. We went up to, we, we went up to Ohio and back, and uh, ended up taking him up there. He saw snow for the first time, and uh, <clears throat> we went hiking through the woods, you know, during the day and everything. We had a we had a great great time. Well, he was getting his passport together, and we were we were headed out to Europe, and we was going to go to Europe in June of 2020, and uh, then the pandemic came, and. Uh, there's a lot of people that suffered from coronavirus, and then there was a lot of people that suffered from the things associated with all the suffering in the world. And uh, he tragically took his life about six months into the pandemic, and uh, his family uh, asked me to talk at his wake. And they said I was the closest thing to a preacher that they had, which that was a far piece. But uh, I didn't know what to say, and so I wrote this song for my friend, and I call it Ghost, and it's for Jacob Hall. May God rest his soul. Hope you like it. And then we'd sweat out our sins and 
tell the spirit what they sing and your light was so bright it was damn near blinding Mama, that I'd play that song for him. It keeps his memory alive. And also, you know, not to make this too cheesy or nothing, but, but that ain't never the answer. It just creates more problems for everybody else. Anyway, change gears. <laughs> I have noticed uh, I have sad songs and I have funny songs. And if I get up and sing all sad songs and people are ready to admit me after the show, and if I sing all funny songs, people want to put me on a comedy tour. So I have to, have to do that. Because <laughs> if I don't, buddy, it gets dark. Okay. This is a song I wrote. I'll, I'll sing y'all a couple more here, and then uh, we'll, we'll go out and we'll uh, have some beers and shake each other's hand and uh, catch up. <laughs> this is a song I wrote uh, a few years back. The IRS was in the process of harassing me and accusing me of what they call tax evasion. And uh, I happened to be exploring the catalog of Willie Nelson during the process of, of that. And, uh, found out that Willie Nelson had his own problems with the Internal Revenue Service as well, and so I wrote this song that don't make a whole lot of sense, but it's called Ride Willie Rider, Thoughts I Had While Contemplating Both the Metaphysical Nature of Willie Nelson and His Harassment by the Internal Revenue Service. I hope you like it. Hey. 
take your money, but they can't take your soul. This, these kind of songs. I know you liked Hunter Blaylock and the Sad Machine, didn't you? <laughs> Hunter's a buddy. He's my buddy. I think we met several years ago at Eddie's old place, Eddie's Attic over there. And uh, we've been buds ever since. He drew me. You know that? He draws cartoons and stuff, and so he drew me. I think he drew me at least. I think he's drawn me three times, if I ain't mistaken. He's actually selling prints of a picture he drew of me and him out there. <laughs> I seen him. I seen him out there. But uh, anyway, he's he's a good buddy. I'll tell you what. I'm gonna end on this song. This is what I want to play. I'm gonna play this song right here. Thank y'all for coming, and thank y'all for uh, coming out. Thank y'all for coming out on a, a Memorial Day Sunday night and uh, supporting live music and songwriting. It means the world to me, and uh, so good to be back up here in Duluth. Can't wait to uh, get back up again. This is a song when I when I first started writing songs, and or when I first started playing songs publicly, I didn't know what I was doing. People told me that I. There's this thing, this saying they have. They say, man, you just fake it till you make it. And so after a few months of attempting to fake it till I make it, I found out it wasn't a great idea. So I wrote a song about it. It's called Fake It Till You Make It. Hope you like it. Well, 
life heard so many say it. You gotta fake it till you make it, but you won't be making nothing. Thank you for coming. Thank you, Shalom.